Spirituality secures destiny. One more time. Spirituality secures destiny and eternity. If God said, be ye holy, for I am holy, then we can be holy. If Christ said, be ye perfect, as your heavenly father is perfect, then we can be perfect. God cannot tell us to be what he has not empowered us to be because his commandments are not grievous. I believe this is one major way to see God crown this year with goodness and his part dropping fatness upon us, our families, our businesses, our career, and all that pertains to us. Therefore, awake thou the sleepers arise and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Recommended books of the month as uttered by me. Walking in the midst of life and conquering controlling powers. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Signed, Bishop David O. Wedebu. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this month, we are practically focusing on spirituality, holiness, consecration, spirituality, holiness. That's the focus of this month, spirituality. Remember, if you are not spiritual, you become a victim of rituals. If you are not spiritual, you become a victim of being used as a ritual. So it's important you understand that spirituality is fundamental. Christianity is not complete without spirituality. Christianity has no proof without spirituality. So this month is very vital and very crucial. And the God of this commission will surely visit us in the name of Jesus Christ. Today we are here to celebrate God's faithfulness, to praise him, to give him the due honor and due praise. And um, just a few minutes of exhortation and um, we'll glorify God for perfection. Glorify God for multiplication. Glorify God for all around beautification. Hallelujah. For this service, we shall be talking about understanding the power of thanksgiving. Understanding the power of thanksgiving. Now, I'd like us to take note of something. As you are seated here now, your blessing is right beside you. It's not a prayer. Let me explain to you. He has not called the house of Jacob to seek him in vain. Which means before you came, he has prepared something for you. If you don't have this understanding, there's tendency to return empty. He has not called the house of Jacob to seek him in vain, which means before they came, he has prepared a blessing. So there's something that accrues you every time you appear in his presence. There's something, whether you, whether you, whether you deserve it or you don't deserve it. Because he's a God of order. His order is that every time you appear, you must return with something. And you surely return with it. Your desires shall return with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. But what is thanksgiving? It might look like a simple English, but what is thanksgiving? In our context, it is giving glory to God for his mighty deeds in our midst, both as a church and as individuals. Please expect to return with perfection, with testimonies. Expect instant touch of God. Expect a sudden visitation. Expect a sudden turnaround. God is never late. You may be watching online. Please note that God is not far. God is just beside you. Thanksgiving is giving glory to God for his mighty deeds. His mighty deeds. The doings of God cannot be quantified. Let me give you one Sim the simplest example of God's mighty deed that we have taken so much for granted. When last you tried to measure the quantity of oxygen you have been breathing since when you were born? If they are to be selling oxygen, I'm telling you, many people will not live. Because those who claim to be rich will hoard all the oxygen in Nigeria. Especially in Nigeria, because I know we have so many wonderful people there. They will hold the oxygen so that people will just be dying and they will be giving, they will be selling it. What the God will serve. What the God will serve. What the God will serve. 
we are not buying oxygen. If you have ever been in your, I mean, hospitalized, whereby you, you buy oxygen, you know the worth of oxygen. You know the worth of a can of oxygen. But here we are. We don't even know we are breathing again. Breathing has gone so natural. So normal. Which is abnormal. Because if you go to the grave, oxygen is there, but the nose cannot breathe. Isn't it? When you enter mortuary, you see bodies. But they also have nose, but they can't breathe. What is different between you and them? God. They, there's, if you go to mortuary, there's air there, there's oxygen there, but they can't breathe. That is a mighty deed. Inexplainable, but undeniable. You can't touch it, but if you don't have it, you are finished. Mighty deed. You can't touch air, you can't touch it, but if you lose it, you have lost everything. What the God we serve. Hallelujah. Give just a beginning of praise. For the breath in your nostrils is a mighty deed. Is a mighty deed. That is, you know, a blessing that we have so much commonized, but it's so special. So much commonized. So much commonized. Hallelujah. If you look at Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19, why is it that we are trying to explain what is thanksgiving? Now, Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19, the Bible says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village, Jesus has entered into a winner's camp in the course of the week. We saw mighty works. We saw mighty testimonies that are pictures to our own present testimonies. He went through this, the village and he met winner members and the Bible says that they stood afar off. He saw some lepers. He saw them afar off and only that they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show thyself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And just answering, said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, said the stranger. Hallelujah. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, let's look at this passage of scriptures. Jesus came into our midst in the, in the course of the week. He visited us in diverse ways. Personally, I have had encounters. Direct voice from the Lord. Diverse encounters, which I'm sure many of us had. Many healings. Many deliverances. Look at that lady's testimony in Kechi. It's a globally renowned testimony. A testimony that will be sharing forever. And many, many more. 55-year-old woman giving birth. And at 58, giving birth again. After men, no stop has been frustrated. What a God we serve. Or divers turn their own testimonies. Many people that were called barren became mother of children. 24 years of waiting, looking for one man, looking for a, a male child. God turned around. 100 miscarriages. Ah, I fear God. Even that body should be weak by then. 100 miscarriages, but eventually ended up as a baby. What a God we serve. Jesus is a doer of wonders. Mighty deeds. What eyes have not seen. 100. At 50, you will even die. I'm not doing it again. At 50. But 100. 1, 2, 3. But, ah, but yet, never lost hope. Now, the Bible says, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, I like us to know, many people always remember God in the day of challenges. They don't remember him 
after the, it has done the testimonies. In most cases, people don't return to give glory. They only go to accept the glory. And the Bible says that Jesus was saying, he said, ten were being cleansed, where are the nine? Which means God always expects us to return. It is in God's plan to always receive our thanksgiving. It is in God's order to be there to receive it. If you don't return, then it can be frustrated. If you don't return, you look at this a great commission. Even anyone that wants to preach during Shiloh, here by privilege, is still saying to God, it's a privilege. Please understand that there's nothing you have received this year that is by your power. You are not smart at all. It's the grace of God. You are not sharp in the context of not final, sharp in terms of you are smart. It's the grace of God. It's not because you know how to go to work. Many go to work, they don't return. Many sleep, they don't wake up. Many eat, it doesn't digest. Many drink water, it goes out from the other side. So, mighty deeds. Look at the testimony you have seen during the, during the week. Even your life, looking at me alone is a testimony. Not everybody that is alive in January 1st is alive today. Not because you are stronger. Not because you are better. But because of his mercy. Give just a beginning of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, and it came to pass. As they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, say Jesus, I'm one of them. 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 Because it is the one that returns that God perfects. It is the one that returns that God perfects. One of them, when he saw that he was healed. Have you seen anything God has done for you this week? Have you seen anything God has done for you this week in Shiloh? Then he deserves the praise. He turned back. I underlined it in my, in my, I mean the Bible, I mean my iPad here. And with a loud voice, glorify God. Glorify God. Glorify God. I was so glad when God's servant was saying yesterday that many winners chapel members are already operating in the realm of sickness-free life. You know, when I hear something like that, I get excited that I have other club members. Sickness, as if sickness does not exist. What a God we serve. As if sickness, when you hear sickness, say, eh, is this in your life? Because around you, you don't smell it. That shall be your testimony. That shall be your testimony. Gradually now for me, by privilege, by January now, I'll be saying 18 years I've not taken medication. It's increasing. I started with one week, two weeks, six months, ten months, five years, 17 years. Now I'm going to 18 years. Not medication, no drug on the platform of sickness. We are human beings. We are all human beings. They are human beings and they are spirit beings. Now, what am I saying? Think about your life. God has been faithful. When last were you being hospitalized? When last did they put syringe in your body to collect your blood sample? When last did they inject you because you had one terrible sickness? When last were, were you told that sorry, you're about to die? Some are hearing that every day. But here we are saying, Lord, no shoe, no car, no permit, no this. It's ingratitude. It's ingratitude. But today, we are grateful. And our testimonies shall be full in Jesus' name. With a loud voice, he fell down at his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So, what I wish to say this morning, God expects it because he deserves it. God expects it because he deserves it. And to him, alone be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. 
But the question is, why this Thanksgiving service? Why is it that when I say, what do I we're doing Thanksgiving? To acknowledge God for all his wonders amongst us all through the year, and particularly Shiloh 2017. Psalm 118 verse 23. The Bible says, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. It is marvelous means it is, it is full of marvels. 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 Look at the one that shared testimony in our midst today. It says stone came out of our body. What a God we say. The marvels of Shiloh are the wonders of God. So we are giving thanks to appreciate him. Acknowledge his hand for the wondrous works. But why must we give God thanks? Number one, which we are focusing on today is to preserve our blessings. To preserve our blessings. To preserve our blessings. Please take note. If you don't give him thanks, he won't continue to service the blessings. To preserve means to keep serving, to keep honoring, to keep manoring, to keep covering, to keep re-energizing. When he gives you health, I say, Father, thank you for health. That health will never go down. When he gives you job, and that job, you always say, Father, that I'm even working. Thank you. You can't lose that job. You can only get a better one. Because Thanksgiving is a preserver. How? Thanksgiving brings God down. Every time you say, Father, thank you, you see him. And when you see him, your situations can never remain the same. So, we give him thanks to, pres to, to preserve our blessings. We all know the scripture, Malachi chapter 2, verse 1. He said, this commandment I give unto you, all ye priests. If ye will not hear, that is, I've been telling you, you refuse. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay to heart, pause there. Thanksgiving is of the heart, not just of the mouth. For out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I've once shared this illustration before, where a young, um, a young lady, I mean a young boy was being told to sit down. And after sitting down, he refused initially. But when he sat down, eventually, from what I heard from the story, he told the father, I'm sitting down, but in my mind, I'm standing up. <laughs> I'm sitting down, but in my mind, I'm standing up. That one is not acceptable. Many of us are doing that. We thank, we say thank you that is not from our heart. You got a job that is 2005 per month. Me, 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 imagine. Ah, with my BSc in 2005. Go back to your country now. Is it by force? Be grateful that 2.5, 2.5, 2005 rand is a privilege. It's a privilege. Look at this at the glorious brother who was a street boy, who is now a church boy. Look at the way he was speaking English here. That I'm ready to serve God. Street boy, street boy, street boy. Street, will street boy be looking for a job of 2-5? Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. I won't share here by the grace of God. I said many of those guys in the streets, they were supposed to be medical doctors. Some were supposed to be engineers. Some were supposed to be presidents. But circumstances of life put them there. But here you are, you are still complaining. God is faithful. Please be grateful. To preserve your blessings, you must always look back. To preserve the blessings, look back. Look back. There's a song that says, forget about yourself, let us worship the Lord. If you look back, you'll be able to give him thanks. If you're able to look back, like I said during the, when I was leading the prayer, you may not be where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. You may not be where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. That is a major testimony. You may not be where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. For example now, you may be desiring to have a car, but you have not lost your leg. 
He takes leg to drive. You may want to become a doctor, but you are not mad. You are not a doctor yet, but you are not mad. Which means they still hope for you. I like us know that God preserves blessings through thanksgiving. If you not lay it to heart, let it be from your heart. From your heart. From your heart. From your heart. If it must be from your heart, then you must be able to analyze. Understand that. If it must be from your heart, you must be able to analyze. How do you analyze? Break it down. Spiritually. Financially. Maritally. Socially. Mention it business-wise. Career-wise. Analyze it. Has God not been faithful? Think about it. Your career may not have been what it ought to be, but you are not struggling. You may not be eating what you want to eat, but you are not starving. You may not have the money you desire, but you are not checking forever. So it is all about being able to analyze from your heart. Look inward. Look inward. Look before you look out. Look inward. Look inward. If you must preserve your career, appreciate him for the journey so far. If you must preserve your job and get a better one, thank him that you even have reason to have CV. Understand that statement. <laughs> you have reason to have CV. There are some people if you give them pen, I've shared here before, they will turn the pen upside down and say, "Is it like this or like that?" Because you don't even know whether pen is for writing or for anything. But it's a privilege. It's a privilege. So with thanksgiving, our blessings have been preserved, but from our heart. He said, I will, he said, to give glory to my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse. Say, God forbid. He said, I will curse your blessings. God forbid. Yeah, I have caused them already. Ah. That is, if you don't thank me, I will curse the blessings. Your blessing shall not be cursed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your blessing shall not be cursed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your blessing shall not be cursed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, why are we giving God thanks? Let me just mention one point. It is for perfection. Say perfection. Every healing that is yet to be perfected in this service shall be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Every healing shall be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Every healing shall be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. Then Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. If you look at it. When he returned to give glory to God, Jesus said, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. That is the message. Now, if you look at that scripture, it says, Thy faith has made thee whole. Analytically, it means thanksgiving is faith. Thanksgiving is faith. Thanksgiving to him, the leper, it was thanksgiving. To God, to Jesus, it was faith. He said, thy faith. What did he do? He returned. Thanksgiving is an height of faith. Like I've shared here before by the grace of God. If I give you something here, what do you say? Thank you. You don't say, amen, 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 amen. What you have received you thank him. It's a sign you have received it. That man received the healing and he had the mind of appreciation. Jesus saw it as faith. Your thanksgiving today will be seen as faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your thanksgiving today will be seen as faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He staggered not at the promise of God. Giving glory to God. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. 21 and as a result because he believed God it was kind of a righteousness his faith brought about a change because he kept giving glory to God he kept giving glory to God he kept giving glory to God so as you are giving God glory perfection is your portion today perfection is your portion today perfection is your portion today perfection is your portion today. Today. today in the name of Jesus Christ so, with thanksgiving, we have been made whole. Whole. Whole means all round wellness. All round wellness. All round. 
You look at your children, well, perfect. Your career, perfect. Your business, perfect. Academics, perfect. Your home, perfect. Your going out, perfect. Your coming in, perfect. With Thanksgiving. So when Thanksgiving is in place, perfection is your portion. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So as we thank him this morning, we'll be rising up shortly to give God solid praise. That is instruction. We have to praise him. But don't do it anyhow. Do it with understanding. Psalm 47 verse 7. The Bible says, God is the king of all the earth. Praise it the Lord with understanding. 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 Underst what is understanding? Understanding means you have a definition of what you are doing. You have a definition of what you are doing. Which means if you are dancing, you are saying, Father, I thank you. When they say, you are marvelous here, yeah. marvelous means God, ah, so my life has changed. I give you praise. I give you praise. You are seeing it. You are, you are, you are, you are actualizing it with understanding. You are not only singing it. You are dancing it and realizing it. So as you praise him with understanding, it shows that you, do, you know what you're doing. Please understand, before we rise up, Thanksgiving is a force that cannot be stopped. Thanksgiving is a force that cannot be stopped. So as we praise him this morning, expect what cannot happen through man to happen to you today. That is, expect a supernatural force to change your levels in the name of Jesus Christ. So please understand, we are raising up shortly to praise God, to thank him, but with a heart of gratitude, with a heart of appreciation, with a heart of understanding, with a heart that can see that as I praise him, it will be perfection. But before we rise up, start picturing the things that God must perfect. Imagine it. Picture it. Try to see it. Is it healing? Is it your business? Is it your career? Is it your family? Is it your health? Is your body, whatever it is, picture it and you see God manifesting it in the name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a beginning of praise for his mighty works in our midst.